Hello, I'm uh, John Bertram, President of, or Chairman of the Sport Australia Hall of Fame, and let me say what an honour and a privilege to be standing here tonight. The um, Hall of Fame, for those folks that aren't totally familiar, started off in 1985, 31 years ago, and it is unique in the world. It represents all sports in this great country as well as all Olympic disciplines. So uh, it is a, uh, unlike uh, any other Hall of Fame, it's the, uh, the members are the, you might say, the legends of Australian sport from within, from within Australia. And to see how humble the various members are, that's the thing that strikes me when I talking to them in the room before. And, you know, let me just say, it was again in the cone of silence, but Casey Stoner is going to be inducted tonight. Okay, World MotoGP champion. And um, he said to me in confidence, he, <laughs> he said, uh, I don't think I deserve to be here. I haven't achieved enough. This is Casey Stoner, the multiple world MotoGP champion. Can you believe that? It just, it just blows you away. So uh, tonight, the importance of sport, why is it so from my perspective? Well, let me just say, I guess when we, when we looked at, you know, when I look at the uh, history of, of Australia in the, in the, in the settlement area, era, you might say the convicts when they came out from England, all the, uh, the debris, you might say, from the, from the cells of, of England, there was no future and no hope and they created the two-up game. And that, of course, the two-up game was resurrected by the diggers in World War I. And then, of course, in the mid-1800s, the concept of Australian rules football evolved. And then rugby followed, and rugby union, rugby league. And then in uh, 1858, a young man called uh, Edwin Flack, he decided to enter into the inaugural modern Olympics as we know it today. And he entered the 800 and the 1500 meters event, and he won them both. And then he had the audacity to enter the marathon. He'd never competed in the marathon before, this young fella. And he collapsed at the uh, 10 kilometers to go. And the locals christened him the Lion of Athens. The Argus newspaper then said, maybe there's a future in this festival of sport called the Olympic Games. That was in 1896. The power of sport in this country. The Great Depression, then we had Don Bradman, the hope and the future of this great nation when he and his, and his team took on the world. And we're not talking about 100,000 people, we literally talked about the whole nation following Bradman and his team in the Depression. And then of course we have these incredible environments of, you know, Dawn Fraser, 1960 and 1964, Rome Olympics, Dawn, you're here. Where are you, darling? Can you stand up, please? A round of applause. There's Dawn Fraser. <laughs> Dawn, was, Dawn was the in inaugural inductee of the Sport Australia Hall of Fame alongside Don Bradman. And Dawn, of course, set the world on fire in 1960 and then 64, and she knocked off the flag. And she was then told that she was out of the sport for 10 years by the swimming union, it was called then. 10 years for knocking off the flag. Well, the reality is she didn't knock off the flag, she was holding on to the ladder where this bloke went up and grabbed the flag. But this is sort of the, you know, this is part of the folklore of this country now. And then of course we move into these great moments of sport. Karen Perkins, lane eight, 1996 Atlanta Olympics, coming from nowhere in terms of where he should have been. And he demolished the, demolished the, the, the you know, the, 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 uh, the contestants. And then, of course, Kathy Freeman, 2000, 400 metres, last day. Who wasn't? Who can't remember that? Like everyone in this audience. Again, it's part of the folklore. In this audience here, we have 40, 40 um, organisations, sporting organisations, national sporting organisations represented here. In this country, there's 6.5 million people, Australians, actively involved in sport every year. And another 2 million um, uh, volunteers. It's the biggest single workforce in the country, and they're all volunteers. 
The, we have here the, we have the, uh, the, the AFL, we have surfing, we have Winter Olympics, we have tennis, we have golf, cycling, Athletics Australia, swimming, basketball, netball, AFL, rugby, union, the whole thing. It's just amazing. The power of sport in this country is amazing. So I thank you for coming along and supporting the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. Tonight we have uh, an incredible young, incredible Australians being inducted, both sports people and sports administrators. You'll just, you'll love the, uh, the best of the best up on stage. In addition, we have the Don Award and we have 12 Don, or, Don Award winners. This is after the, Sir Don Br Bradman in terms of not only performing at the highest level on, on a, uh, at the peak of your sport, but it's the way you did it. Whatever captured the imagination of this country, whatever represents the sporting etiquette. So we'll, we'll hear about the Don and the Don Award winner in, in very short term. Also, we have something we're very proud of, the Sport Australia Hall of Fame Scholarship and Mentoring Program. Young people, boys and girls, uh, up to the age of 20, starry-eyed and bushy-tailed that want to take on the world. And the major opportunity here is the mentoring program. Each of these scholarship winners will receive mentoring from one of our Hall of Fame members. And you'll, you'll just love what you see. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, and uh, welcome to the Sport Australia Hall of Fame.